So, you know, we in a new year, new me season. Yes. But a lot of us still have some of the same goals from 2023. And a lot of y'all, and I know for sure because y'all came up to me and asked. You did. A lot of y'all wanted to start a podcast. Yes. I got good news for you, player. Spotify for podcasts is here for every need you have. We've been using Spotify for podcasters since we started our podcast. It's so easy. You literally record, edit, and upload all from your phone, your computer. So no matter what your setup looks like, you can start now. Yes, get your conversations, your opinion, your views out to the world. People need to hear you. You can distribute your podcast to Spotify and anywhere else that podcasts are heard. With Spotify for podcasters, you can earn money in a multitude of ways. Ads or podcast subscriptions. I mean, it's an easy way to get your visions out to the world and earn some extra pocket change. Yeah, my favorite thing about all of this is free 99. Yes. <laughs> you know, they don't charge you a dime. So you really got nothing holding you back. Today, today, not tomorrow, today, let's be heard. Spotify for podcasters. Let's be seen. Welcome and welcome back to another episode of the For the Healthy Health Podcast. Where we talk about conscious living, self-awareness, and everything in between. I'm your host, Ree. Sunset Tim. Thank you for joining us and allowing us to be a part of your journey. It took me a lot to say that without laughing. <laughs> Why, though? I don't know. I'm in a good mood today. Hey, that's awesome. That's good to hear. So, I mean, how you doing? Elaborate. I'm in a great mood. I took a dozen selfies this morning. Yes, you did. Like, literally, probably like 15, 20 minutes. And I know to, you know, the normal ear, it's like, okay. But I feel like I had this conversation with you. I feel like I had lost my mojo Mm -hmm. or I didn't feel as confident. But this morning, those taking those photos made me feel confident. It made me, like, remember who the fuck I am. So that in itself put me in a really good mood. Despite, it's been a... Kind of like a busy morning, but despite all of that, I'm in a great mood. Excited to be here in conversation with you. How are you today? I'm good. I am. Today, um, today's been a good morning. A lot of emotions. Broke cardinal rules. Yes. <laughs> Answered the phone for some folks and, yeah. and talked to some folks. But through it all, it's been a really good morning so far. Uh, often I tell myself it's too early to be in a bad mood. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, but I, it's, it's been a really good morning from the jump, though. Just the energy just been flowing in the right direction, you know. It's just one of them things you roll out of bed on the right side, not the wrong exactly. side. Exactly. So I can't really explain it. I'm not going to question it. It feel good today. Agreed. Yeah, that being said, how are y'all doing? From the cubes. From the cubes. As always, take a deep breath. Moment of solitude, of silence. To really understand how you're feeling, whatever the feeling is, it is okay. Become aware of it. And release it. Okay. With that done, what are we rapping about today? Today, this is going to be a great episode. I'm just, the energy is just, just so, it's just <laughs> vibrating so high. But today, I feel like you and I both are always in an ongoing conversation about trusting ourselves. And it's just something that we deal with on a personal level like Mm -hmm. individually so that's what we're talking about today trusting yourself i always have to tell myself bitch trust yourself trust yourself bitch i told you told you that the other day didn't i yes i can't remember what it was about like bitch trust yourself like you know this shit you know this yeah but what has been your relationship with trusting yourself it's been shaky it's been so shaky I think I extend trust in others and I prioritize trust in others more than I prior. Why can't I say prioritize? (laughs) Prioritize. No, we're not counting. Prioritize trust in myself. And I think even when we talk, when we're thinking about relationships, right? Because in order for us to trust ourselves, we have to have a relationship with self. Yeah. But I think I've, as I've said before, me, Being a person that's guilty of this, I don't prioritize, or I haven't in the past, prioritize the relationship with myself. And if you haven't done that, how do you expect to trust yourself? Yeah. So the relationship with trust in myself has been kind of shaky, but I think just becoming aware of that fact Mm -hmm. is off to a better start, and it's allowing me to move in the way that I need to move 
What about you? Mine's the same thing. I think my choice for myself, like most people, it goes in like peaks and valleys. Mm. Like it's high, it's low. It's depending on, you know, where I'm at in life, how I'm feeling about it, how I perceive my life at the moment. It's been it's been a relationship, like I said, it started out awesome, then it gets rocky, then it gets back. Yeah. It's it's like a back and forth thing. I don't think your relationship with trusting yourself is ever going to get to a point where it's just always at the peak. I think your relationship with yourself, period. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, and, and just like your this journey that we on, this spiritual journey is always non-linear. 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 Path. Non-linear path. But as you were saying, but I think trusting trusting me, I've been more consistent with it because. I've been putting the work in too. Mm. When I put the work in, I believe I can do them things. Yeah. You know what I mean? The more I take that shot in practice, the more I feel like I can switch it in a game. Agreed. You know what I mean? So that that's the one thing. I think getting more comfortable with myself has better that relationship with, with my trust. Like you said, you can't trust somebody that you don't know. Until y'all got a history of work together. Right. That's what you start to trust on, the work that has been put forth. You trust that it's going to be like this every time. And if you ain't got that work with yourself over your lifetime, then ultimately you just can't trust you. Exactly. Just like you wouldn't trust anybody else in the world you exactly. work with. Something that's really interesting is that I've been reading a book called Come Up Success by Liz Tran. Mm-hmm. And this really, it kind of inspired this conversation. It's so funny because... It seems like certain times I read particular things or hear particular things and it speaks directly to my soul. And like, obviously, like I just said, trusting in myself was one of those things. I think a large part of it is that we will allow society, mama, daddy, whoever, to tell us who we are. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, you're good. You're such a good painter. So we now embody like, oh, they said I'm a good painter. So I must be a good painter. Oh, they said I'm beautiful. I must be beautiful. They said we rely on society and other people outside of ourselves to define us. And I think that's like the biggest pitfall of humanity is to rely on other people to define you. And Mm -hmm. I've been guilty of that. There's a quote by Carl Jung, and it goes, the world will ask you who you are. And if you don't know, it'll tell you. When I heard Liz say that, when I heard her say that quote, I was just like, whoa. That's a good quote. It's because it's so true. There's so many things in my life that I've allowed other people to define for me. What we get congratulated on, we often turn back to because it makes us feel good when people applaud us and clap right. for us. We start to become a, a little bit of an addict for the Applause. cheers of yes. people yes. around us, family, society, whoever it might be. So we keep turning to those things until now. We believe it's part of our identity mm-hmm. to be this. Mm-hmm. When ultimately we are only doing it to, to feel in communion with someone, or to feel wanted, needed, yep. seen with people. But I think, like I said, trusting yourself, when you trust yourself, you align deeper with the things that mean more to you, not what the treatment that you want in society yeah you do more what you feel versus what's going to get me likes exactly basically you know we think which about is, it in the social media i know i was just like which is hilarious because likes look a different way before social media but now we see the literal the like morality, meaning like, yeah. yes like you doing do. it for applause doing it for the likes yeah yeah absolutely when i put this fit on they like I, I get a hundred more likes. So I'm yeah. just going to buy more of these and I'm going to just keep getting likes. Exactly. And that stops you from being authentic yeah. and being the truest version of yourself, which gets you even further away from trusting yourself. Because yeah. if you don't trust yourself, you don't know yourself. And if you aren't being who you truly are, who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are who you? Who are you? You got to step by that. And we love individuals too. And if I had to you know, put a scope in on them people. They, you got to trust yourself to do some of the stuff that these people we've seen in life that we admire do. The people who step out of their boundaries and do things. I remember in, in hip-hop when Cameron started rocking the pink. Yeah, You remember that? He went all pink fur. It's a famous like picture of him, the pink yeah. fur, pink hat. 
you gotta trust your step outside to step outside in what it was like like 2005 or something like that uh-huh. and be a black man wearing all pink yes you know what i mean and knowing that every camera was gonna be on you but yeah. looking back now it's one of the most iconic pictures in hip-hop history is everybody start everybody start wearing pink after bruh. that bro all the dudes start wearing pink it reminds me of uh, something i seen i feel like everything is like oh i saw this on tiktok yes. i've read about this but i mean whatever but now i did see this girl on tiktok she was just saying when i started telling people about my idea and they like oh, i don't know about that one nah I don't. you know they're basically being negative and like they can't see the vision she's yeah, like yeah. yeah i know it's gonna be a bop i know it's gonna, know be, a it's gonna be a hit like yeah, yeah. yeah because you you really do have to lean into your individuality like when i think about like you mentioned camera i think about tyler the creator ain't nobody yeah, else like tyler like I love me some Tyler. And it's so funny because I'm not necessarily a Tyler the Creator fan musically. Yeah. Like he I, I you can't deny that he is talented sure. musically, but I'm more I'm a Tyler fan. The, the actual the Tyler person, the creator. The like, person, yes. Yeah, yeah. The actual creator that is Tyler. The shit he makes, how he brands it, yes. how he sells it even. His personality, like everything about him, just we it's a Tyler Yeah, yeah. Tyler He's, home over here. But but again, you got to trust yourself. You can't do them things. On the whim of, I think they're gonna love this. Mm-hmm. You have to do them on the whim that I love this. If you happen to love it, that's awesome. Yeah. But if you don't, I'm still gonna kind of love these exactly. things. Exactly. And that's definitely what I'm trying to step into. Trusting yourself starts with knowing yourself. We are mm-hmm. taught to understand and know ourselves through other people. There's an experiment that I read about basically to see how well these participants knew themselves, mm-hmm. right? They'll ask a question. Are you usually mad or calm or it depends? Are you usually energetic or I'm trying to think of, I can't remember like specifically. Laid yeah. Or laid back. Are you usually trustworthy or untrustworthy, untrustworthy or, or it depends. depends, right? And as these questions are going on, I'm, I'm answering. It depends. It depends on like just about every single one, because before the experiment began, they said, you know, think about yourself in this respect, but also think about someone, you know, like a friend. Da, 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 da. And literally when it was um, on one of the questions, it was like, are you untrustworthy? For me, I was like, it depends. But when I thought about you, I was like, oh, he's definitely untrustworthy. <laughs> right. But the whole point of the experiment was that people are easy to define other people versus themselves like in this yeah. experiment it was so much easier for them to say oh yeah this person i know they're definitely this or they're yeah. definitely that but when it came to themselves it depends had so many questions right and it's it's exactly and it's it's just shows how we're easy to define other people but we can't define ourselves mm-hmm. it's so i guess it's just really it's just so much easier i think it's easier because we have gathered information on other people we hear what they say, we trust what they say, we see their actions, we interact with them. We know them because we have done the research on this person. We've studying them to an extent, yeah. getting to know them. Yeah. We don't study ourselves a lot mm. of times. So we don't know ourselves a lot of times. We're comfortable with the idea of who other people are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like a scene you can predict. I know he's coming over, you know, we probably talk about this. But when you left alone, often you don't know the next scene. You don't know the next thought that might come about. You can be alone, been in a great mood, and then suddenly you see something and it reminds you of a very sad part in your life. Yeah. Or you might see something and it reminds you of someone you're grieving over. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily know the next scene when you're alone and getting to know yourself. Because you can get these... What, I, what I've always said, like backlog of emotions. They just come out of nowhere. Yeah. Because you haven't dealt with them. Exactly. Um, you, unresolved emotions. Yes. You ain't studied them. You ain't looked into yourself. So it's way easier for us to find comfort in other people because we've studied them and not studied ourselves. Agreed. Yeah, that's why it's so important to know you. Like, I know we say that all the time. Yeah. Know yourself. Know yourself. And it, I feel like that's something we hear all the time. But how many of us are actually actively taking yeah, yeah. the time to know who we are? You're hearing it so much because we're not doing it. Exactly. You know, we just not. I think it's so, it's so much to do with like comfort zoning. Mm-hmm. Like, like anything outside our comfort zone, the unseen, the unpredictable, it like frightens us. It put us in a state of fear. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't trust when we don't learn. 
And we can't learn without trusting whoever is teaching. And if you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I had to think about it. Yet. You can't say it again. You can't. You can't. We don't trust. And when we don't trust, we can't learn. We don't trust. And when we don't trust, we, we can't, can't learn. learn. Okay. And for us to learn, we have to trust who's teaching. Mm. If you don't trust self, then you can't learn from your other self. You can't learn from the mistakes you make. You can't learn anything if you don't trust the teacher. Agreed. If you can't trust yourself, it's going to be hard to get back to the natural you. I think a lot of times since we avoid trusting ourselves, then we'll do things in life. Do. Anything possible. I said, do you? Do you? <laughs> Baltimore, man. Baltimore. Baltimore. Do you? <laughs> We'll do anything <laughs> to get back to our comfort zone. Yeah. Anything necessary. It could be. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's how all the, um, I guess, all the fuck boy shit, all the fuck girl shit in the world ever happens because someone goes out of their way to do something, anything necessary to get them back to a comfortable state. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it just fucks everything up. I agree. When it comes to first, obviously, knowing yourself and then building that relationship with self and allowing yourself to trust yourself, you can then actually hear the inner genius inside. Great. And the inner genius, it will allow you to make decisions that actually feed your soul versus satisfying society and doing what everybody else wants you to do and ultimately ended up in a space in a time that doesn't align with who you are and doesn't align with the things that you wanted for yourself. I agree. I think we need, like you said, trust the inner voice inside of you, that mm -hmm. inner genius. He almost like a like a mad scientist, the like evil little scientist. You ever see the movies where the scientist is in there and he got like the green shit in one tube and he yeah. like puts a drop of it in some shit and like it explodes the entire what science movies have you watched i've watched plenty of them it's even that's even how the powerpuff girls theme starts okay i do remember he that. was mixing shit and then he dropped the uh what they called it the goo i don't remember no, it was like plutonium or some shit I like have that no i really wasn't a powerpuff girl the... fan like that. what but i did watch dexter's laboratory did you watch dexter's yes, laboratory I watched, I watched him and dd dd I don't. Why don't I remember it? Because all this is Cartoon Network. I wasn't a Cartoon Network gal. Oh I was God. a Nickelodeon what? or a Disney gal. I was not. Cartoon Network was like the last no, on my Disney list. Disney Channel was last on my list. Oh, Disney, Disney was first. Then Nickelodeon. That explains a lot. Then Car what does that explain that exactly? That explains a lot, bro. <laughs> you were that's so Ravens type nigga. That's Love Raven can probably... That's so Raven was busting. Yeah, so I probably can like tell you any Raven line. But anyway... I can't believe you said you didn't watch Cartoon Network. Nah, it was Eddie, like, and Eddie. I remember the shows, but really wasn't watching them like that. Oh, my God. But anyway, it's like this, our, our inner voice is just like a scientist mixing these great yeah. things up. But when we start the actual activity of bringing them to real life, we suddenly just start to take little things out the yeah. formula. Mm -hmm. Just to make it more suitable mm -hmm. and more of a pretty package that suits society's yes. idea. We're conforming. Of what, yeah, we... We make our ideas, we conform our ideas to fit the ideas of society. Yeah. So now I'm making a product just so society likes it. Yeah. And I'm not making anything that I just personally want to see in this world. Yeah. I'm relying on other people to make things that I, that I want to see. see. When I have all capabilities of making the things I want to see. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the evil beautiful genius inside of you trying to flourish but you just keep blocking them because you can hear yourself yeah i've just been to say you because you can hear critics but it's really you but it's really just you like nobody has criticized you nobody said that no one got on your head about that thing you want to release ultimately because you didn't release it so no one has said anything yeah the only person you're hearing is a darker version of you mm -hmm. who is controllable if you want to. I said it before and I'll say it again. Some of the best art, some of our best decisions, just things in general are created when we are making things for ourselves. Yeah. Like, you take our podcast, for example. Like, I think that today's episode is just such a great conversation because it's something that we genuinely are dealing with. Mm -hmm. When you create for yourself. And like you said before, if they fuck with it, cool. If you don't, cool. Trusting that inner genius inside of you is the best thing you can do. We often don't get to do that 
because of our ego speaking. Mm -hmm. And I spoke about earlier when you have an idea or something creative you want to put out into the world and you can hear criticism before it's even out there. That's that ego. Exactly. Speaking to you in a rough tone that you don't deserve. Exactly. I think generally speaking, too, we also just have a hard time telling the difference between our inner genius versus our ego. Think about, for me, example, there are certain things that I want analytically speaking, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I want 100K. I want to be the number one podcast, which I've never, I've never really ever said that, but who wouldn't? Like, who, who wouldn't would? want to be, you know? Yeah, yeah. But you really have to look at it like, okay, on paper, tangibly i'm saying i want this thing want these things but what do i really want mm -hmm. i want security yeah i want i want to be seen i want to be understood i want to be in community so i think whenever you're thinking about your inner genius versus your ego you want to think about it like that like you mm -hmm. know i'm saying i want these tangible things that's the ego want to be number one yes right mm -hmm. but really what does my soul want what does my spirit want? What it, what does my inner child want? You yeah. know what I mean? What things could I have, could I do now that would take care of that inner child? Yeah. That, and you just got to look at it like that to really kind of like tell the difference. Because your inner genius and your ego will want the same things. Mm -hmm. And when you accomplish them, only one of them gets to do the speech. Yeah. So we have to be really careful. We've seen like artists or, you know, activists or anybody win something or get the spotlight that they wanted and then again somebody has to take the podium the ego or your inner genius as a famous you know kanye west um grammy acceptance he says you know everybody want to know what would kanye do if he didn't win i guess, guess we'll, we'll never, never know, know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know that's more like his ego, ego speaking yeah, in absolutely. right there the ego what took does the kanye not move with his ego probably but but see there are points i'm just gonna say the album where the, his first album his first couple of albums are like that and then there are other points where he comes back and like you know fuck the grammy that's not what this is about mm -hmm. then his, his, soul. his inner genius is talking yeah. his soul and natural the natural him is speaking that these don't mean anything yeah at all it's mm -hmm. about the art it's about connecting with people yeah so both these both these people, well not people, but both these entities inside of you yeah. can speak at the podium. You have to be careful who you letting them speak because that crowd might take you a certain way. Yeah. You are the crowd. Yeah. So, and you're going to be the one applauding one of these two on. Mm -hmm. And remember how applause works. We can get addicted to it. So if you let the ego take the podium and you love what he said, you're probably going to turn back to him when things get bad. Mm -hmm. And when you listen to the ego when things bad... At, it's a toss up on how it's going to work for you. Yeah. And I know we speak uh, a lot because I know we have a lot of creatives here. I feel like everyone is a creative. And I yeah. know we speak like in our artistry standpoint, but I also understand that we have a lot of younger audiences, audiences as well. So the audience, when you say applause, applause can come from anywhere. It yeah, can come anywhere. from family, your partner. It can come from anywhere or in it yourself whoever it can be anywhere and when we say create it don't even really mean art we talking about life a selfie you know what i'm saying a selfie. A selfie. we talk but we talking about a selfie but we also talking about your life like in a year in a two years we are always creating it's not always mm -hmm. in an artistic standpoint but like yeah your life yeah, yeah so your life is a whole project that you create exactly so just make sure and this is me talking to me always but I'm just trying to really move with my inner genius. There are so many times I've looked back and I'm just like, damn, I got to start trusting myself. Yeah. Like, oh, like I just be. And at the same time, I'm trying to give myself grace because this is something new that I'm learning. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But there are so many times I look back and I'm like, you really, you should have trusted yourself. I don't know why I remind me. We watching Suits and Mike Ross, <laughs> Mike freaking Ross, well, you know. he went to prison. He turned himself in. He cut a deal. Yeah. All alone, the jury. What is it? They voted. How did they decide? The it jury, court? like so, before the day before the jury was gonna come back with the verdict. A verdict. He there went we and cut a deal with the state attorney uh -huh. to take lesser time. He was facing seven years. He said he'll do two years. Yeah. But if he had just waited literally eight more hours, 
he was going to beat the entire case yeah. and serve no jail time at all. They found out. It's a little different, but no, Rachel, trust himself, Rachel Zane, his fiance, told him, you, yeah. you need to trust yourself because he represented himself. Yes. So trust your work. Yeah. You couldn't. If you if you know suits, then you know what we're talking about. If, if you, you don't know, know you suits, know. you need to get on suits. You it is a it's been a pleasure for me to put you on suits. It has been our play. I put you on suits. Yes. If you do get on suits, you would know the phrase previously on suits. Previously on suits. It's previously on suits. <laughs> previously on suits. Once you start, you cannot stop watching suits. Okay, and I, I don't to, to speak to your point just real quick, we got a lot of young listeners out there. And um it just it makes me feel young to live, to be like talking to younger people and they want to hear it. It made me feel cool, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it made me feel a little bit cool, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. I just want to shout out to y'all, all our, all our um, high school listeners and y'all young college listeners. Uh, yeah. Shout out to y'all. I know y'all in a very, I ain't going to well, call it a difficult point in life, but it's a very challenging. It's, it's a point yeah. where you're making a lot of decisions and a lot of people got a lot of opinions on what you should do mm-hmm. and shouldn't do. You know, take your time and trust yourself. You just want to throw that in there. Absolutely. You know Definitely I mean? take the time to trust everybody, but especially younger, the younger audience. Because I, even me, like, y'all have probably heard this story before if you're not new here, but whenever I started college, it was so many girls. We were all nursing. We're nursing, nursing. Yeah, I'm nursing. nursing I'm nursing. Because our moms taught us we should be nurse. You know, that's yes. we, we listening to society parents but i remember saying like you know what i'm undecided i and so many other girls was like you know what me too i'm gonna go undecided too because i don't know if i actually want to do this that's one moment i actually felt seen i'm just like damn we really just out here winging life you know we you, we don't have it figured out and that's okay we don't have to we mm-hmm. don't have to have it figured out right now and regardless of what society tells you should tells you you should have right now or what, regardless of what everyone else is doing right now it's okay. You don't have to have it figured out. Nah, you got time. Just trust yourself. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. One of my most proudest in the relationship that I wear like a badge, I treat like a trophy, is the one I have with my daughters. I love that relationship. It's almost like an opportunity for me to reparent myself mm. through them. A lot of times with that relationship, you know, parent child there is a perceived right and wrong way how it should be handled right and that's just not true every parent is individual and every child is individual you can't treat each one very black and white but also as the parent figure there are certain things i have to work on within myself to be better for my daughters and i need a safe place to do that and that's where therapy comes into play i agree with that 100 percent. i think when it comes to being a human being in general It's important for us to know who we are to be better in particular relationships. I learned so much about myself through therapy. I've learned to be a better partner, a better daughter, a better mother. And with all of that, it really allowed me to handle all of my relationships in a more intimate way. So if therapy has been something on your mind, give BetterHelp a try. Everything is completely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and to suit your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists at any time with no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash F-T-H-H today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash F-T-H-H. What are some ways that you know or you've used to get to know yourself better um something for me i always love doing is being alone i love you i love our family but i feel like up until a little while ago there was always someone with me yeah every breathing moment of my life until i went to sleep there was always someone with me and even us we've been together for a really long time we we're always together Mm -hmm. but i put an emphasis a few years ago of spending time by myself i learned about the three s's here recently silence stillness and solitude Mm. um with and i've talked about stillness before Stillness is just a state of mind. Mm-hmm. 
I feel like we live in such a noisy world. You know, last episode we talked about how there is always something for us to turn to. We can watch something. We can get on our phones. We can call somebody. There's always something for us to get into with the state of the world and how advanced technology is right now. But I've been making it a priority to steal my mind. Yeah. Because in that space, I can recognize thoughts. Because have you ever, like, you? I think you said this last week, too, the day is going and going and going and going. We're doing a million things, but we don't actually notice certain thoughts. So it's time to go to bed. Yeah. Stillness. Right. Yeah. And stillness. So that's when we recognize, we see those thoughts or hear those thoughts. We actually can be still. You can't. And I'm like, hey, okay. So I'm actually, I was thinking about this. You, you, you're you actually aware of the things that were on your mind and, and your thoughts. So within that, I've been able to actually understand myself, understand the difference between my ego versus my inner genius, understand what my soul actually needs. Um, definitely always spending time alone, going to a coffee shop, going to the library day, taking myself on a date, like, has been major for me. And if uh, if you are in a relationship and you want that a long time, you just got to let them know that it's not about them. I know. Because when you first did it, I thought it was me. I know you did. I really thought I was like, I fucked up and did something that you just didn't want to tell me about. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm just thinking like, I'm just thinking it was me. Like, she wants to be away from me because I did something or I'm a certain way right now. And I mean, you eventually you just had to explain to me it's not about you, I didn't do anything wrong. It's about you trying to find more of you inside yeah. of you. Yeah, it's funny that you bring that up, though, because sometimes I still, like, feel not bad, but because of that, because you felt that way, you know, I, and I'm glad you communicated that with me mm-hmm. because I do need to tell you, like, hey, I'm doing this to, you know, get to spend my time alone. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I, it's important to know yourself outside of a relationship because Absolutely. I think for a while... I would say early on in our relationship, maybe I didn't know myself outside of our relationship. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of easy to get caught up in a relationship because you get to, you were known as you, and then now you with this person, and people know you with this person, so now it's like y'all names tied together. Yeah. And you can ultimately feel tied together with a person if you don't, you know, use some time to yourself in stillness. But, uh, yeah. I definitely, I rock with you on the stillness thing. Like, I think that's why so many people struggle with sleep. Bruh. is because that's your only still part of the day. No phone conversations with people. No TV. No phone. No, none of that. It's just you. So now everything that you needed to think about at certain time periods is coming. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like you, if your, <laughs> if your thoughts could be stuffed somewhere, you just put them in your closet all day. And then as soon as you lay down, they just... You rush out the closet mm-hmm. right at you. It's hard for you to go to sleep or have any type of peace when you don't take that peace during the day. So whenever you're doing something, do it slow, gentle, and quietly. That'll yeah. help you out. It helped me out a lot. So if it's going to get a coffee or making a smoothie or fixing your breakfast, whatever it is, don't don't turn the TV on. Don't look at Instagram. Don't take that phone call. Just do that thing and just let your thoughts come. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the easy way to practice stillness. And even you're doing something, but you're still still mentally, though. Yeah. Because you're not allowing new distractions. Exactly. You know? it, with stillness, though, you also have to be mindful to not give those thoughts any meaning. Yeah. That's important, too. And basically, watch your thinker. Yeah, yeah. You know, Don't words to Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, because if you get judgmental on what the thoughts is, then you're going to get stuck on thought one. Exactly. You had 10 thoughts behind it to get through, but you can't stop judging thought one to get to the rest of them. Exactly. And then we start to move in certain ways because of that thought. And when your thoughts don't define you, what are some ways or a way that you get to know yourself? Another thing that I use to get to know myself is like emotional tracking. Mm, What do you mean by that? But it's like I take like a mental note or or physical note. Sometimes I've did physical notes in my journal a couple years ago of seeing what like brings high energy, what brings low energy out of me. You know, what makes me laugh, what makes me cry, what makes me jump with joy, what what makes me scream with anger. Just doing like I said, doing the math on things. Like just doing activities and then asking myself, how do I feel about this while I'm mm. doing it? And then when it's done. How do I feel about myself? Am I in a better mood or a worse mood 
when I did said thing. Yeah. And how it, how it affected me. Um, AKA living. AKA doing research on yourself. Yeah, research on yourself. <laughs> like, so we do it on everybody else. Like, yeah. We, we know everybody else because we do so much research and we store so much about everybody else in our minds that we feel like we have a clear image of who they are. Mm-hmm. It's ultimately why we call certain people, like, oh, they changed up. They switched up on me. Yeah. They never probably was what you said they were. Yeah. That's how you perceive them. That's how you perceive them and how you stored them in your mind. Yeah. Because in our human experience, it's easier for us to store and compartmentalize people, things, mm-hmm. places, or whatever, mm-hmm. than to actually give them a very broad spectrum of everything they could possibly be. Oh, which is so unfair. It's so as, unfair. Yeah. As human beings, we so much individuality and so much growth within us. Something you said also, when you talked about doing an activity and taking note of your emotions after the activity. Yeah. I love that. And it's, I think that's something I know that's something that I need to do because you'll then start to notice patterns within yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I'm starting to feel like I'm doing this again. Well, and, and then you can go back and kind of look at, okay, what happened? And you can start to understand why you're feeling the way, because there are certain times in my life where there is a feeling that washes over me and I don't understand why. Yeah. And that just what you said, I need to kind of do research on myself and understand why I'm feeling this way. Yeah. And then, and if it's an unavoidable activity, what I used to try to do is pair my, negative or stressful activities with a fun activity afterwards Mm -hmm. so it will kind of help me relieve the stress it's almost like a person who you know what i work out before i go to work or after work because i need to relieve the stress from my job in something positive yeah you know what i mean um it's so many things you can do it with but yeah try to pair your negative stuff right before or after something you know makes you feel very well is that habit stacking it's kind of like a habit stacking yeah. to an extent you know but like i said if it's unavoidable because there are some things in life is unavoidable you yeah you can't afford to quit that job right now yeah you know what i mean or we can't avoid this person or we can't avoid this conversation and what i've been yes. telling myself just because something feels like a negative experience for me doesn't mean i don't need to embark on this particular experience yes. because there are so many lessons I feel like, of course, we have our good days. You know what I mean? But I feel like most of my lessons have come from the experiences that I deemed as negative in my yes, life. Yes, stressful, yes. Yes. We can't avoid those things. We avoid those things. We ultimately avoiding a challenge, and then we're ultimately avoiding... Growth. Growth. Evolution, everything. yeah. I think, I think ultimately, just speaking on that for a quick second, we avoid challenges because we don't want growth. Growth is actually a painful process. Yes. You would think about a child... The child probably is uncomfortable inside a mom's belly. It's a very small spot for them to grow into. Yeah. And when this spot becomes just unbearable. They come out. Then birth happens. Yeah. And and from every woman I've ever heard from, birth is not easy. No, it's not easy. (laughs) It's not. Yeah, that made me think about, oh, that made me think about a lot. But when you're going through these painful experiences, there's a rebirth. There's a rebirth. There's a a birth. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Another way that we're beginning to be like more familiar with, because I've done it in the past for like a job, but we took a personality test last night. We did. It was fun. It was really fun. It, it was. was the Enneagram personality test, and it gave us like a number. I was a four. I was a one. Yeah, I was a, what was it? A four. Uh, I forgot the actual name of it. But when I first saw the results, I was hated, like, I don't like hated, this. Hated I said, I don't like this. I like it because it was like gave me everything negative first. And it's like we don't be want to see the negative shit about ourselves. But then I, you know, started reading more and I'm like, OK, all right. <laughs> you like your positive yeah. before your negative. Exactly. I do. And that's a notice thing. That's a what? That's something to notice. That's something to notice. And I mean, I don't care. <laughs> but it's crazy part with me. I'd rather take my like, like you want the good news. You want the bad news. Hit me with the bad news first. I need the good news first. No, I want the bad news first. Tell me what... No, tell me the bad news. I was a perfectionist on mine. What was mine? Mine was the individualist. Yeah, you was the individualist. Yeah. You were the perfectionist, which is 100%. I agree with mine. Yeah, mine was... 
every personality test I've ever taken, or even when it comes to my birth chart or numerology, because we have life path numbers. Do you remember your life path number? Mm -mm. I think I was a one or an 11, and I think you were a five. I can't remember. But everything that I've ever done when it comes to that type of stuff, especially with numerology or astrology, it has been so accurate. What I've learned that... When it comes to your birth chart, and if you're into astrology, please forgive me. I may be not saying it 100% correct. Elena, Elena going to get on you. Elena, shout out to my girl, <laughs> Elena. She, like, that girl, she be like, hey, did you look? If I tell her I'm going through something, did you look at your chart? She be on it. I be like, nah, I ain't looking at my chart. I need to look at my chart, though. But basically, when it comes to, like, astrology, the planets and the stars are aligned in a certain way when you were born, right? And there are literally an octillion different ways that these planets and stars could be aligned mm -hmm. so we are literally that individual you know what i'm saying there's there's so many there are only a billion people in the well i don't know how many are. there are billions of people in the world right but there are literally a uh, octillion different ways the planet and the stars could be aligned so we're literally one in an octillion yeah. like that's how different that's how individual we are and so but yeah like the birth charts be knowing what they talking about what sign what's your sign like, what you talking about? You're you're a cancer, but you don't know cancer. your other two. No, nah, I don't know. We much. looked it up one time. Yeah, yeah, but I don't be I don't be remembering a lot of that. I don't be knowing a lot of it. I'm a Gemini for anybody who's wondering. Gemini Sun, Gemini Moon, Virgo Rising. For all my astrology <laughs> astrology babes. Ah, uh, <laughs> shit, that's that's some shit. Um, another way that I, I get to know myself is like. It go back to the first one, kind of, but, like, just noticing certain things. Like, notice what topics people want to speak with me about. Mm. Noticing what mood or what energy people come to me in. Okay. Ultimately, let me know something about me because they wouldn't have came to me yeah. with this energy if it wasn't something particular about me. One thing I have to say about you, though, people do love to come to you with, like, deep shit, like, personable shit, when advice. They, yeah, when they... When they angry, when they want to make a, a big decision, like you said, when they sad, people want to come talk to me or people are just easy to open up to me a lot yeah, of Yeah, that's what it um, is. You have a comforting aura, like people want to talk to you. So it's, it's good to notice like what, what energy comes to you naturally. Like you didn't call yeah. them, just what naturally comes to you when you go to places and whatnot. Yeah. What are you naturally into? The, the shit that comes to you is there for a reason. It ain't mm -hmm. accidentally. People don't always come to you with this energy by accident. Yeah. I used to think it was. I really did. I was about 28 before I noticed, like, damn, why do people always want to open up to me? I used to be like, I go to the barber shop. Like, bro, it be everywhere. I go to a barber shop for a simple cut. And I'm finna, the nigga next to me spilling his whole life story <laughs> out to me. I'm like, bro, why? Go to a job? Day one, folks telling me about this. Th I'm like, brother, I, I mean, I really just came to this bitch for nine months. I'm gonna be gone. I'm gonna be gone. I'm, I ain't here long. <laughs> soon. Like, I ain't gonna be here long. Like, why are you opening up like this right now, bro? Like, but again, I had to notice, like, people find security next to me. Like, people think things will be okay. My big brother told me, he was like, bro, when you around... I just know everything will be all right. Aww. He was, I was like, why? He was like, I don't know. I just know if you here, you you everything is going to be okay, bro. I love that. That's you know really I mean? beautiful. And I think that's something that I'm glad you noticed it. Because I think it's been going on for years. Like, yeah, for literally, years. you were probably a teenager. You know, when it's even, or yeah, even yeah, younger. Yeah, yeah. But you just didn't notice it. And I think that's one of your powers that you need to harness and... Yeah, I, I love because I agree. You are. It's just you. Just I just want to spill my guts to you. Oh. Every you know. <laughs> I do. There you go. Oh my! You know what I have noticed about you? Here I am being able to to tell other people about themselves versus oh, looking inside. You don't know how to take a compliment. I don't know how to take a compliment. because anytime I say like whether it's in real life, y'all, because I know he'll do it on a podcast. Be like, ah, oh, here you go. He do it off off the record too when it's just me and him. He just he'll. Here you go. Like, no, just take the compliment. I'm one of the people that's hard for me. It's hard for me to take compliments because of that perfectionism in, inside me. Like, I don't know. I can't I can't really speak too in depth about it because I'm still learning. Yeah. But the perfectionist in me says, no, nah, not me. Not good enough. Me. Aww. Not good enough yet. Keep but going. You are. Keep working. Keep going. Another way for me to get to know myself is dreams. 
you like you, you do interpretate dreams well. You have predictions of the future. I know, very and it's well. that's scary. That's so Raven shit. You said you was a Disney Channel. It's scary, and I think there's a part of me that I haven't embraced yet. <laughs> but maybe one day I will. As far as like the prediction thing, like. It's crazy. I be feeling like I be having deja vu a lot or I'll dream about something. Like, I literally had a dream about someone, hadn't seen this person, had a, hadn't thought about this person. They don't even live in the same city that I live in. I had a dream about this person. Not a not a bad dream, just, you know, a normal dream. Yeah, they just appeared. Bruh, why I see them at the gym the next day? They don't even live here. You don't even live in this city. You don't even live here. I was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Literally had to ask. What are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm visiting so-and-so, so-and-so. Ah, but nah, it's just my dreams be really speaking to me. I have, a, I have dreams a lot about my grandmother, about my ancestors a lot. And I interpret it as, you know, she's trying to communicate with me. She's trying to tell me something. She's watching out for me. One dream specifically that I had. I remember when I, let me go back. I remember the first dream I ever had about my grandma. Like I was, obviously I was in high school mm -hmm. and I can't remember the details about the dream, but I remember I woke up just bawling. I was just crying because it feels so real. Yeah, you had woke up like that. Before. Yeah, but I remember a dream more recently that I had about my grandmother. She was who she, you know, she was herself. One of the last version of her that I knew before she transitioned. And I'm me. You know, I'm, I'm big re, I'm me, not not high school, I'm re, me re right now. And I'm sitting on her lap like a baby, like mm. a baby sit on their mother lap, and she's just holding me. And I can't remember specifically what I was going through in my life at that time, which it was just a couple, maybe last month, but I took that as if she told me she had my back. She had me no matter what. That's very emotional, man. Eh. Tear up real quick. Stop. Do you ever dream about your dad or, like, anything? I used to when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I used to dream about uh, him a lot. It used to be a lot of a lot of stuff that I thought about him. I used to dream about him then once he was gone. I used to, I remember I told you I thought that nigga was a vampire uh -huh. because he stayed up all night. So a lot of times when I was a kid, I used to have like vampire dreams. Not bad ones. Like he was a cool vampire. I was with the nigga. <laughs> like, he was cool. Like, but he would be he would come in the form of like Dracula mm. and stuff like that. Um, and then when I got older, it was less about actually seeing him, and now I used to actually like hear him, and like um, he'd be in another room. I go to the room, and then I wake up. Yeah, you know what I mean. But um, the only vivid one I can remember, my last one was like uh, similar to you. I was like in high school that I had him. It was at my grandmother's house, and we grew up in the country. So when my grandma washed clothes, they would go put them on the line, mm -hmm. and. Uh, my grandma yelled something like, your daddy calling you, like they would always do. So I got up, I'm like, I went to the living room, I'm like, where he at? Like, she thought he outside on the line. I'm like, all right, cool, I'll go out there and help him. And I opened the door, and it's almost like I saw him real quick. But then it's like, have you seen like a solar flare where the sun get real bright? Yeah. It just did that, and I woke up immediately. Wow. But that was about the last time I, I dreamed about him. I don't really dream about him like that no more. I think I'm more at peace Yeah. with his... um. But it's passing now yeah. than I was back then. I feel like, let me, I mean, only you can we interpret. Whole dream. <laughs> only you can interpret your dream. But I feel like whenever you were younger and you were dreaming about him being a vampire and you was with him, maybe that was the way you, per, like, your perception of him. So that's how he appeared. Yeah. But I think that was a, a, a sign, symbolic, for he is always with you. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. Go ahead. <laughs> you used to have a dream, a repeating dream. I'm, I've never had a dream that I've constantly had over and over and over. Yeah. But you used to have a dream where you were being chased. Yeah, my the escapist dream. I used to have that. I still have had those, like, probably last year was the last time I had one. I've had those since I was, like, seven. Are um, you serious? Like, for me running, trying to get away from I don't know what. Sometimes it was... I say last year. No, I had one last month, and I woke up, and I wrote about it in my notes. Oh, wow. I actually took notes that's on it this actually, time. That's amazing that you wrote about it. Yeah, I did. I took notes about it this time. But I be trying to escape. I don't, sometimes it be like men in black type people. <laughs> no. Other times it's been like the world, like meteors crashing. or wow. It's been anything, but all of them had to do with me escaping yeah. something, trying to leave. And sometimes I would get caught. Sometimes I would actually escape. But... um. 
all of it kind of slowed down when I had a dream about the Golden Eagle dream. When I told you, you that. did tell me. I, it's kind of cloudy, but, but I, I told you I had the, the Golden Eagle dream. Golden Eagle dream is like for anybody who don't know, it's like that and the escapist dream kind of run together. Mm. The escapist is you trying to leave something behind or you trying to get to a comfortable state and you just feel like you can't escape it. Yeah, the eagle dream is is more or less you could run from this. Like an eagle could get away from any situation, but you'd rather sit here and get through it. Mm, I love that. So it was, it was it, the, them dreams, the escapist dream slowed down once I had the golden eagle dream and I realized what was happening. Yeah, I love dreams. I feel like I'd be scared of dreams. I love I dreams, like and you shouldn't be scared of them because <laughs> be that like means it. you're afraid of a part of yourself. Because I feel like dreams. For sure. Yeah, I feel like it's part <laughs> for sure, for sure. But I feel like it's parts of myself that I'm not yet ready to embrace. But dreams are our higher consciousness speaking to us, bro. Yeah, and I think if you it. tap into that, I'll be wanting to know it all. <laughs> I'll, be know. <laughs> I'll be liking that dreams or visions and shit like that. You do though. I love dreams. You do. Every time you drunk that blue lotus. Bruh, I drunk some, and I haven't had Blue Lotus since. Now, that's some other stuff. Like, because if you don't know about Blue Lotus, Blue, Blue Lotus basically helps you tap into your highest, higher consciousness. It helps with, like, meditating and all that stuff. One time I literally drank some Blue Lotus, and I fell asleep, and I had a vivid dream. It was Super crazy. Vivid. Super about. vivid. Like, I thought it was life. The bruds. If y'all the shot shot, y'all would have sworn she was on shrooms or something. <laughs> like, she was out of there. I was like, you was like, man, you should sip some sh- new. One thing about this man, y'all, he won't try, won't try stuff. Shit, no. Like, he won't. I was micro dosing for a bit. You was like, nah, I'm going to let you handle no, it. I'm going to let you do it. You won't do blue lotus. Even herbs. You nah. won't do that. We, like, nothing. Weed, like, won't drink most times. Nah. Yeah, I'm not. I really ain't going to drink. But one thing about me, I'm going to try something once. I'm going to try it at least once. I'm going to try it now. I'm going to get, you know, I said, hey, last time I got stoned, I got two. I got too yeah, high. Yeah, that was. I just got way too high. Having uh, smoked since. Having smoked since then because it, it reminded me of all the bad highs I had in my life. I, I think had, I think we did it wrong though. Yeah, we just hit, I just we was just hitting it too hard. Yeah, all I needed and too was rapidly. Like, <laughs> on my mom, I was facing the joint. Ooh, 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 Bruh, like, body, <laughs> body. I mean, I'm I'm hitting the joint so good. It's like, damn, this motherfucker gone. I like, look down like I got a roach. I'm like, damn, bro, I wasn't supposed to do this. Nah, this is wrong. I say about 45 minutes later, baby, I hit Pluto. Yeah. Like, we was both in there together like, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> it was funny. You thought you were going to die. I calmed you down. Yep. And then I thought to myself, well, damn, if she thinks she going to die, I hit <laughs> as much as she <laughs> It's crazy how the mind works, bro. That's, that's some funny shit, bro. But now I don't be trying to add shit in because I know my... I've had struggles mentally, mm-hmm. and I finally hit. And it's really like a, I'm really from a place of scarce scarcity, right? Okay. Because just being open with you, because I had so many mental health issues. Now that I've got to a good point, I'm scared to add anything in. I think mm-hmm. you're gonna fuck with it. Yeah. So I don't add nothing in out of fear, bro. But and I gotta get over that fear. That's eventually. true. And it's like in a space like almost from living in the past. Yeah, yeah. But I'm so addicted to this comfort. I won't add. I'm talking. I won't add nothing. It took me a while to even add sea moss. True. But I, I fuck with sea moss now. Though. Yeah. And I understand that that perspective that you're coming from as well. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't. We didn't got. A little off track. Okay, we have what? We not, no, we got enough. We can't give them too much. Okay. They, they burn, they mine's finna explode. Okay, I was, cause I, I don't, one thing I do wanna say though, when we're talking about, you know, personality tests or dreams or even, I was gonna say tarot cards. I love tarot. Yeah, tarot. Human tarot, design, yeah. which I'm not that immersed in, but wanna get immersed in. These things will, give us certain answers but these answers that they give us are not law like it's okay yeah, like you yeah. know for your personality test if you tell you one thing you be like nah that ain't me like at the end of that this is a personality test and don't nobody know you better than you i think for a lot of these things what they will do is point your focus in a particular direction and allow you to look inward mm. and naturally the like it's kind of like what you said last week your first response or your first thought mm. typically that's your inner genes, typically, yeah. because I think sometimes in or now, ego, either one, whoever true. Take, whoever take and I think sometimes when we have time to think about certain things, especially like from an artistic standpoint. Remember, we did a design this week, and I was, yeah. When I first did it, I was when you first did, it, I was like, "Whoa, that's so good." But then after a few hours, I was like, "I don't know." It was yeah. my ego. Yeah. So I think 
again, none of this stuff is law. It's just to point your attention into a particular direction and allow you to look inward. It'll put your consciousness and inner genius to work at the end of the day. Yeah, so I fuck with that. You do? I do. Okay. Now, on that note. On that note. It's been a long episode. I feel like it's been long, yeah, but it's been. very good. Very great conversation. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for being here with us today. Remember, the answers are within. Nowhere else. Inside of you. Look no further. You are the answer. We're sending you so much peace, so much love, so much abundance, and everything you need in this moment. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Smooth.